It's that time again. We're waking up with watches, kicking off Independence Day weekend here in the States. As ever, all you see here is for sale. Names, references, and prices in the description below. Reach out to me directly, tmasso at thewatchbox.com for all purchases, sales, and trades. And remember, we are buying right now. Acquisition is our top priority and we are paying our best prices ever. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com to sell one watch or an entire collection. Let's jump right in to the most unusual watch I have ever featured on this show. You may ask, why is this G-Shock wrapped? Because I reason for $70,000, you deserve to get your G-Shock in the original factory packaging. This is the dream project, the GD 5009JR. The timepiece originally launched at Basel World 2015 as a concept and released in 35 pieces 300 grams solid yellow gold for the 2019 model year. Now the watch itself is chock-a-block with features. It has four alarms, a countdown timer, a chronograph, world time in 39 cities. It has a backlight. It can even locate your phone with an interactive feature that causes the phone to chime and you can set all of its many functions using your phone. 200 meters water resistant. One of the reasons it took so long to get to market is because it's as shock resistant as a standard G-Shock, which means it can survive being thrown out of a three-story window. 200 meters water resistant, shock resistant, and of course on a full gold bracelet with individual links fixed by screws. Patek Philippe, take that. This timepiece is a luxury product in every regard, right up to and including the fact that these incredibly rare watches, 35 total, come with the most elaborate box set you will ever encounter. It's made of gorgeously hand-finished polonia wood. It has a handmade iron kettle inside made by a craft manufacturer that has been around since 1852. The box is the size of a steamer trunk and when you get this watch, you get all attendant accessories. This thing is absolutely unbelievable and because it's a backlit watch, our first loom shot's coming up right now. There you go, I should mention, in addition to its other functions, perpetual calendar, okay. If we need detox from quartz, and I understand some aren't into this, here is a dress watch multi-complication from a brand that is perennially underrated for its dress watches and its complications. This is the Blancpain Tourbillon Volant Granda Semanier, a weekly calendar with a day, a double digit date, a seven day power reserve with power reserve indicator, and of course a flying tourbillon with no upper bridge. You can see that the tourbillon carriage entirely black polished. The watch is both loomed and 100 meters water resistant. So this automatic winding dress complication also is a credible sports watch. Now it's a limited edition of 188 pieces originally launched in 2006, and it's suitable for all wrist sizes as the watch is only 40 millimeters in diameter and extremely wrist friendly. As you can see, this is a practical watch. Extravagant, yes, but also very usable with a combination of long power reserve, water resistance, and fully loomed dial. Of course, it's also an automatic winder, and as you can see, the automatic winding rotor has been entirely freehand skeletonized and engraved. This is caliber 3725, and it is, in its own right, immaculately hand-finished. In particular, the broad mirrored bevels are the most impressive part of the movement itself below the rotor. Full deployment clasp, throw this one on the wrist, the watch includes remarkably short and tightly downturned lugs, so it fits well even on a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference. This is not pink, this is not rose, this is true red gold. And the timepiece, which features a tourbillon designed by Vincent Calabrese, AHCI co-founder, this is simply overwhelming in every regard. This is less than $40,000. This is a timepiece that you can buy for less than two-thirds of what people are paying for used Patek Philippe Nautilus and steel. And you ask me which I would rather have, I'm not a colored gold guy, and I would still pick this Blancpain. This watch is surpassing in every regard. But let's say you want to split the difference between a sports watch and a dress watch, and your budget is a bit more modest than Tourbillon and $70,000 G-Shocks. Well, that is what the Zinn Reference 1800 Damazener is for. 43 millimeters in tegmented and hard black coated Damascus steel. This is a watch launched in 100 pieces for 2015, representing the softer side of Zinn, though not too soft, as the hard black is over 2,000 Vickers and underneath tegmented steel, so unlike a conventional black coated watch with a diamond-like carbon application, the hard carbon 
can't eggshell because there's no soft metal underneath. There's tegment. So this watch, which is five years old, looks brand new with nary a mark, and it's designed to stay that way. Now, the Damascus steel case is made by SUG, which is Zinn's proprietary case factory that also makes precious metal cases for Langa, among others. But you can see that the Damascus pattern, which runs across the entire case and bezel, also runs across the dial, and here is the hook with this watch. This Damascus steel is a monoblock construction. No, not the case. The case, the bezel, and the dial are all one piece of steel. You can see it is a 100 piece limited edition. This is number 92, 2892A2 inside. Very accurate, thin, fine, under 11 millimeters thick, 43 millimeters in diameter, and 100 meters water resistant. So it is still a credible sports watch in spite being a dressier watch by Zinn standards. Very comfortable, plenty of loom. We'll do a quick loom shot with this one. And you can see, in spite of being a dress watch, the water resistance, automatic winding, and of course, tons of loom mean it is a viable sports watch and dress watch all in one. An impressive and rare watch from Zinn. But if you want a Zinn that's a little bit more like my own Easy M11, then you want something like this 836. Also 43 millimeters in diameter and under 11 millimeters thick, it could be a body double for the Damasainer, only the timepiece you see here is all of satin steel. Nicely understated, it includes a Zen integrated rubber strap that is very substantial, and you can see over-engineering is the name of the game as this timepiece, which is built and designed in Frankfurt, includes individual pin retainers for the cuttable strap. Now, the clasp goes above and beyond. It is, is a very, very, very solid piece. Now, as you can see, there is a built-in fold-out extension, and the swing arms themselves are machined from the solid and thus very redoubtable. A handsome combination of modest satin finish on the outside and twin trigger release means it's both beautiful and robust. You can see the scored individual cuttable segments on both sides. So this is a brand new Zinn strap. And I can tell you that the Zinn factory rubber straps are silky. Throw it on the wrist and you can see it wears easily and comfortably, low flat flush. This watch too features tegmented, almost indelible steel with the steel having an up to 1500 Vickers, 1200 to 1500 Vickers surfacing. The tegament process is considerably deeper than the few micrometers you get with something like a Bremont or a Diashield Seiko. I found mine almost impervious to scratches and scuffs of any kind. This watch gives you not just the tegmented case, but it gives you a soft iron cage around the movement. So this is effectively the German Milgauss as it is 80,000 ampere per meter anti-magnetic in addition to being 100 meters water resistant, this is a very resilient timepiece. Scratch resistant, anti-magnetic, and of course water resistant. Let's do another loom shot. This one puts even the Damasainer to shame. This is why you buy a Zinn, a no-nonsense functional design that nevertheless manages to attain a level of grace that is simply unexpected of a hardcore sports watch. 2892A2 automatic inside this one as well. This is best described as a sporty dress watch. This is the IWC reference 371404, part of the long-running Portuguese chronograph model that has been the best-selling Portuguese of all time. It's also one of the most wearable, as the 409 millimeter stainless steel case, which features both polish and satin, is universally wearable in a way that the 42 and up Portuguese models are not always. As you can see, it's a handsome, stylish watch with a tuxedo-style vertical panda dial, handsome, comfortable, and of course, a chronograph, the king of complications. It also gives you the grace of a no date dial arrangement and if you look at the printing on the dial as well as the registers you can see it has a handsome cruciform symmetry so this watch beautifully balanced and of course one of the best sellers all time from IWC a design that hailed from the 90s back when IWC watch design was not just less extravagant but perhaps a bit more sober adult and enduring as those 80s and 90s IWC timepieces have stood the test of time in a way that the Georges Kern era watches probably won't all this is a lovely watch automatic winding fun a 7750 and as you can see it'll fit well on a wrist considerably smaller than my 16 centimeters circumference wrist. 
Now let's say you want to go with another iconic Portugueser. You like the tuxedo dial, but you want to go with something a little bit more elemental. Well, the Portuguese automatic is for you. Launched back in 2000, the reference 5000, as you can see here, a limited edition of 1000 pieces, 42 millimeters in steel, was the predecessor to the later Portuguese automatic models with the outstanding taste of a bubble style plexiglass to evoke the original 325, and a balanced dial without a date that many consider far less cluttered and contrived than the watches that followed. Now there is a seven-day power reserve, applique individual Arabic numerals, leaf style hands, blued sub-register hands, and you can see that there is small polished dimple style marks outboard, little indices for the minutes to be read. Now because of the plexiglass, you have a very authentic off-axis camber and, and distortion, which a lot of folks find is evocative of vintage, and a watch that manages to capture the spirit of a vintage watch, but with the quality of a modern timepiece. Caliber 5000 in its original form, automatic winding, seven day power reserve. You could see the, let's move the winder out of the way. It is the IWC Peloton Paul-based winding system. You can see the two brass Pauls and the Paul wheel. The balance in this original movement beats away at 18,000 vibrations per hour. And as you can see, it features an overcoil hairspring, all of this adjusted in five positions like a chronometer. An impressive oversized movement at the time, it was the largest automatic movement ever built and it remains one of the largest to this day. You can see the rose gold medallion inside the winding rotor. Let's throw this watch on the wrist and get a sense. This is a timepiece that is the original oversized watch, as the Portuguese reference 325 of 1939 was designed to house a pocket watch movement inside a wristwatch, all in the name of accuracy. Well, again, you have a pocket watch sized movement inside a wristwatch, a rare and beloved limited edition. This is another one of those 90s designs that got in just before the arrival of Kern. An enduring look, it'll be just as appealing for the centenary of the Portuguese in 2039. This is a watch that's hard to categorize, as I hesitate to call the Bulgari Octo Finissimo Automatic a dress watch, and yet 40 millimeters by 5 millimeters thick, it certainly feels the part of an ultra-thin formal timepiece, but in black ceramic, this might be the best way to take it, as it could be sporty or a dress watch, elegant and aggressive in the same 40 millimeter, 5 millimeter thick package. The ceramic solves my primary objection to the original, which was the susceptibility of the fine finish titanium to scratches and scuffs. All matte ceramic, this one is remarkably resilient, ultra hard, and thus on its class bottom, immune to desk diving scratches. The timepiece fixes the one major objection I had with the original. Now the dial is also a matte ceramic with lacquered individual indices. You can see Numerals to match at 12 and 6 with polished and faceted skeletonized hands. The case is 46.5 millimeters lug to lug, so it's going to fit well on a small wrist and it's very comfortable. Titanium and ceramic are both very light materials, so on the wrist, the watch really disappears, feeling almost toy like when you close your eyes, it could barely be there, to the point that you might shoot panicked glances at your wrist to make sure it's still in place. But you can see the brilliance of this dial is the polish of the individual indices, the hands, as well as all of the detailing for the numerals and the sub-register. It is a very easy watch to read in spite of the fact that it is black on black. Now the timepiece includes the caliber BVL 138 movement which was built specifically for this model. The original in 2017 won the GPHG men's watch prize. This movement's a big reason why. Platinum micro rotor to keep it thin and open up the case back for viewing. The movement is only 2.23 millimeters thick by over 37 millimeters in diameter so you're looking at a huge movement that's thin in profile and built for this case. The mark of a true manufacturer. Full balance bridge beaten away at 21.6, and again, the 55 hour power reserve, truly impressive considering this movement is less than two and a half millimeters thick. It's also considerably hand finished as the bevels are started mechanically, but then finished by hand, a surprising refinement on a watch that costs less than $20,000. A beautiful piece, handsome, a little bit stark, I'll admit, and harsh in a way that dress watches rarely are, but it has an aggression that makes it feel contemporary and versatile enough to also be your sports watch, not just your dress up piece. What's up, the ante? The model you see here, the Bulgari Octo Finissimo Torbion Ultra Narrow, is also 40 millimeters in titanium and only five millimeters thick, but the difference here is that we have a BVL 268 
52 hour power reserve ultra thin manual wind flying tourbillon caliber now you can see it is a flying tourbillon with no upper bridge to block your view of that black polished tourbillon carriage the dial is all gloss lacquer with applique rose gold indices logo as well as arabic numeral 12 you can see gold hands at center rose gold a case that is alternately polished and satinated a look i happen to love dlc coating on titanium it is feather light and remember the movement which is only one point 0.95 millimeters thick is one of the thinnest tourbillon calibers in the world rose gold crown with ceramic cabochon we're going to flip this one upside down and take a quick look at that movement as you can see the underside of the tourbillon is remarkable because it uses ball bearings rather ceramic ball bearings at that rather than a jeweled pivot the balance staff has a jeweled pivot but the tourbillon carriage itself uses ceramic bearings ceramic bearings are used throughout this movement which is one of the reasons it has an apparently low jewel count of 13. The ceramic bearings are unlubricated and operate sealed for life for low maintenance and cheaper maintenance at that. They also help to thin out the movement. Now this is a largely hand finished caliber and you can see everything up front, the engine turning, the satination, both on the mainspring barrel as well as the mechanisms of the keyless works which you can see in action black polished screws Cote de Genève laid down by abrasive wheel and you can see there are mirrored bevels this is a glorious movement in an exceptional and unusual watch Bulgari has the wind in its sails as a brand it's up and coming I see them in just a few short years and I mean two or three not five to ten but in two or three years being considered on par with and viable rivals to Audemars Piguet both versed in the same Valley de Joux watchmaking traditions, they will be rivals and they will be viewed as peers. And of course, Bulgari, the old Gerald Genta manufacturer, part of a now integrated full company manufacturer that makes cases, dials, movements, and conducts all of its design in-house. Bulgari, a spectacular manufacturer and truly arriving in the world of mechanical watchmaking. They have arguably surpassed the stature of Cartier in that regard, as I know which of the two brands I take more seriously in the Haute de Gamme. That said, there's something to be said for value, and while the Bulgari certainly represents a compelling value proposition, this Grand Seiko Elegance Automatic SBGR 261 39.5 millimeters in Zeratsu black polished stainless steel gives you an affordable point of entry into the world of true integrated manufacturers. Now, every part of this watch is made in house, including the sapphire, the pivot jewels, the shock protection, the balance, the hairspring, and the escapement. Seiko and Grand Seiko make everything that goes into the watch, except perhaps the strap. Now, the timepiece has a glorious lacquered ivory dial. It's somewhere between eggshell and ivory, and it is a lush, glossy, gleaming, bottomless shine. The individual elements of the dial, including the black polished and faceted hands and the faceted individual indices, are all finished by hand, just as the case is finished by hand, holding the surface against a tin milling plate. The dial itself is handcrafted. The movement on the inside featuring a 72 hour power reserve and note adjusted in six positions, not the chronometer standard of five. This watch goes above and beyond in every regard. It has a full deploying clasp and this being a vintage inspired Grand Seiko, inspired by the 1960 original Grand Seiko. It includes such flourishes as a vintage logo on the buckle itself. This is a timepiece that wears well, looks great, it's comfortable, it's casual, it can dress up if you wish. It's an all-arounder that defies classification from a small but growing brand that has a rabid following. This is a timepiece that, like Bulgari, hails from a brand that is on the rise and one of the most exciting names in luxury watchmaking today. If you'd asked me a year ago, what is the hottest independent in the watch industry? I would have stated without hesitation, Richard Mille, and that's changed, and I'm glad. Although, I must say, I'm not an F.P. Journe fanboy. I respect the fact that the watches are integrated efforts with everything made by the manufacturer whose name, and frankly, the man whose name sits on the dial. Unlike a Richard Mille, they are generally assemblies of parts. F.P. Journe watches are case, dial, and movement made by one company. They're designed by one man, not a committee. Richard Mille checks a box and approves a design. F.P. Journe draws the watch himself. So you're looking at a Santograph right here, designed to calculate 
one one hundredth of a second on chronograph registers that incorporate one second, twenty second, and ten minute circuits. The use of the tachymeter scales on these sub registers allows you to theoretically gauge the speed of an object moving between thirty six thousand and six units per hour. It can be kilometers, it can be miles, you decide. There's a broad range of color on this 40 millimeter rose gold watch as we have the rose gold case, really more red gold, a white gold dial, we have black printing for the numerals and railroad track, we have a black polished steel inner bezel for the registers, we have white and we have red and we have black on the sub registers with fired blue biomorphic tapered Jorn hands at center. Now of course you have this patented rocker system that allows you to start and stop the watch, a GPHG Egidol winner. This timepiece was once the best picture at the Oscars of watchmaking. And the two patents in the caliber 1506 are one of the reasons why. Now you can see this model right here includes a full gold movement with the barrel at center. The edge of the barrel drives the time telling functions. The arbor, or basically the axle of the barrel, drives the chronograph, which is why this watch loses no balance amplitude when you activate the chronograph. That is the other patented feature of the watch. And remarkably, it has an 80 hour manual wind power reserve, 48 millimeters lug to lug, and about 10 millimeters thick means this watch is comfortable even on a small wrist. As you can see, flat, flush, and on this remarkable British Racing Green FP Jorn factory strap, a striking array of colors, some gloss, some matte, some metal, some hide. And yet, at the same time, this watch works as an integrated whole, not just because it comes from one company, all parts included and design, but because F.P. Jorn first designs every watch before he engineers them, because he said, if the watch doesn't look good, why bother? At least on a design basis, though, I would have to consider this Jorn's Opus. Originally launched back in 2009, no one could have anticipated that over a decade later, the FP Jorn Chronomet Bleu would be the hottest dress watch on the market. 39 millimeters, the timepiece features an iridescent blue dial that's difficult to capture on camera and almost in defiance of language, as you can't quite explain how something can simultaneously be glossy and metallic, but this rich dial, which probably keeps its secret better than you'd expect in that the off-white printing and hands really are the hook, not the blue. But this dial is just the beginning, as you have a tantalum case with that hypnotic blue-gray metal here, all of high polish. I went to F.P. Jorn's case and dial factory and I saw everything in process. I was not allowed to see how this case was polished. I don't know why, maybe it's a little bit of a ploy to create mystique around the watch, but I also heard that someone did get to see how the case was polished and Mr. Jorn was very, very pissed off, so I tend to take it seriously. The watch at 39 millimeters is basically a refined chronomet souverain as they have the same 56 hour power reserve, twin barrel, 18 karat rose gold movement, caliber 1304, and the one for the Chronomet Bleu features no power reserve, so it's somewhat simplified, but it's also engraved on its base plate, Chronomet Bleu. Now, the timepiece is adjusted in six positions and very accurate, beaten away at 21.6 with a free sprung index for shock resistance. You can see several different types of finish, engine turning on the base plate, a grand doge or barley corn in the gap between the barrels and the balance, and then you can see there's a lovely Cote de Genève across the individual bridges with a bevel on the edge of the bridges. Now, of course, that is a machined bevel, but the fact that the watch's movement is made entirely of gold offsets the combination of manual and mechanical finish here. The result is exquisite and super premium. I'll also mention that the watch features F.P. Jorn's signature hidden drivetrain. The drivetrain arcs under the dial, meaning that you can't see the actual means of conduction as you trace the power to the balance. You can see the escape and you can see the balance and you can see the barrels, but you can't see the train between them. And that opens up these broad spaces to showcase the finishing on the base plate, which is truly special. Again, this is a watch that wears well on any wrist. Even a small wrist is gonna wear it well. It's super thin, flat, flush, and compact from lug to lug. It's only about 46 millimeters. So this is a compact watch that anyone can wear with great panache, a lot of fun to enjoy, and arguably the F.P. Jorn design success. Let's switch gears from Jorn to AP for a moment and speak about 
perhaps the one design success in the first year of the Code 1159 dress watches. This model, the Code 1159 Automatic, represents the best combination of metal and dial of all of the initial offerings. Because of the white lacquer of this dial, the watch has an apparent depth and nuance that's lacking on the darker dials. Those tend to look flat and featureless, whereas this one appears rich, dynamic, and deep. Now you'll also note some of the ways AP spent money here, as the dial itself features all applique rose gold indices, beautiful vaulted and rounded hands that look as good as anything you'll find from Roger Smith. And then we have these lovely vaulted barrel shaped and polished individual indices. We have the quarter Arabic CS and I think AP made the right call by putting the date at 430 rather than replacing an index or a numeral. There's also a lovely loop counterweight to the needle style seconds and you can see the Rahal outboard that adds depth to the dial. You can also see the dihedral style crystal that's used. It dips in the center so it has a little bit of a, a U shape. This is easily lost in online photography and it's one of the features of the watch that simply doesn't photograph well or present well absent first-hand experience. Now you can also see hexagonal screws are used to fix the strap to the case so bars and screws rather than spring bars are used. An expensive way to build a case but the right way with a big heavy expensive watch and of course the hex screws reference the Royal Oak. Even the buckle here features a hex screw binding it to the strap and it's a unique design that's specific to the Code 1159 with both satin and polish. If you look at the mid case you can see it has been faceted to an octagonal shape that again references the Royal Oak but with its own identity polished at the top and the bottom and framed by the top and the bottom of the case. You can also see that the lugs themselves are evacuated to create an open, airy, dynamic case profile that feels a little bit like scaffolding on the wrist, as though this were a watch under construction in real time. You'll also note that the bevels are gorgeous and well chosen. Turn it all over, you have a movement with a 70 hour power reserve, caliber 4302, hacking seconds, quick set date, and you'll note it's built for sports watches as it has a full balance bridge, a free sprung balance, and then a very large balance wheel, so it's designed to resist shock induced timing deviation. AP makes its own cases and its own movement, so we're speaking of another watch that creates everything in house. You'll also note the coats of arms of the Audemars and Piguet families on the rotor, reminding you that since 1875, Audemars Piguet, the oldest haute horlogerie watch brand in Switzerland, still in the hands of the founding families. AP is a family-owned company like Patek Philippe. Now, this is a spectacular watch, but I think I might be able to do even better. Why settle for one watch when you can have two? And this is an extraordinary opportunity for those who want something rare, vintage, collectible, and upwardly mobile. This is the Chronomet Resonance, the Generation 1 watch with the symmetrical 12-12 dials that can be set independently, power reserve indicator, both barrels for both movements wound by a single crown, you have the dual time capability set with the single crown, and because the resonance effect which couples the two movements takes about 7-10 to 10 minutes to fully gain purchase, of course you're going to want to synchronize your seconds hands regardless of how you set the dials, so you pull the flyback mechanism down at 4 o'clock and now the hands are synchronized. 38 millimeters in platinum. This is a discontinued case size, and remember, this is a discontinued model as this dial was discontinued after 2009. But the real hook here is that you're getting that, the 38mm Generation 1 res with a brass movement. And this is one of the last. As you can see, the case was made in 2004, and mid-2004, F.P. Journe stopped making the brass movement watches. Gold is worth more as a commodity, but brass is worth more to collectors because they're not making any more, and they built very few. The movement's also different because the barrel bridge in particular changed in architecture. So on the latter version you only see the pivot jewels for the barrels. Here you can see them with their clicks, their click springs, and their ratchet wheels, which is just mechanically more interesting. Now you can see two power reserves, two drivetrains, two escapements, and two balances. They don't touch and they're not geared together. There's no coupling spring as you would see on some competing resonance watches that claim to be resonance but are in fact mechanically linked. Now what you see here is that there's a rack and pinion at the center. You turn that gold screw and it moves the one balance cock away from or in proximity to the second balance. The idea is that if one runs fast because they're coupled like metronome or pendulums in close proximity, the parasitic losses emanate out and synchronize these two. So if one runs fast, the other will slow it down and vice versa. The movement, of course, rhodium plated brass. Brass is gold, but rhodium is silver, and the rhodium is what gives this movement its color. Again, triply discontinued in that it is a 38 
a res one and a brass movement. I'll add another interesting feature. Of course, these are the Eleanor made French manufacturer cases with the double hallmarks and the Eleanor maker's mark. Those were discontinued after 2008. So if you want an important early FP Journe watch, and the important ones are the brass movement watches as well as the cardinal designs such as the res and the tourbillon, you want something like this. Getting into FP Journe can be a little confusing because there's a ton of models for a brand that builds relatively few watches and has only been around for 20 odd years. But the thing to do is to go for a tourbillon remontoire, a tourbillon souverain, or a res if you want to own something approaching FP Journe's Rolex Submariner. True, the Chronomet Bleu is probably a better known design, but if you want to touch the heart and the soul of the brand, you want a res or you want a tourbillon, and this is a great example. I feel like Vacheron is quickly becoming the Swiss Longa. Not because there's any similarity in design, but because they're both hugely underrated brands that mostly make dress watches and don't get enough credit for what they do well. This is the Vacheron Constantin Malt, a lovely tonneau style case that's only 9.1 millimeters thick, 36.5 wide, and about 47 millimeters lug to lug. It's a flat flush and handsome white gold watch with a lovely nickel anthracite dial featuring all applique white gold indices and Roman numerals. You can also see the lovely faceted alpha hands, which are half frosted for better contrast, this Geneva Hallmark ultra high-end dress watch is graceful, unusual, and even for Vacheron, a rare model line. When you turn it all over, you can see there's a manufacturer movement inside, and this is the post-2012 standard of the Geneva Hallmark, as it is a full watch standard, which is why both the case and the movement are stamped with the Geneva seal. And the movement is the 4400, which is a Vacheron in-house caliber that's manual wind, Geneva Hallmark, five position adjusted, and it has a superior 65-hour power reserve. So not only is it very nicely executed and quite thin, but it's built by Vacheron for Vacheron, and it has far more than the industry standard of about 40 hours of power reserve. With 65, you can put this watch down for a day or two and not worry about it stopping. A truly graceful and unusual watch from a brand that since 1755 has remained the oldest continuously operating Swiss watchmaker, one of the holy trinity, and possibly the hidden jewel in Richemont's crown. I feel like Vacheron is a company whose best days are ahead, and watches like this are one of the reasons. Jumping back to the world of sports watches, here's a model that came out in 2015 and extended the world of the Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch Dark Side of the Moon. This is the Vintage Black, 44.25 millimeters and lightweight and scratch resistant, almost scratch impervious ceramic. This one differs from the Dark Side of the Moon in a couple of different regards. First, you can see the simulated patina used on the dial gives this one a vintage evocative set of color tones. You'll also note the intentionally distressed leather used in the strap, and by the way, how about that gusset in the strap to reduce wear and gouging? You'll also appreciate that unlike the standard dark side of the moon, this watch features all satin finish, so there's no high polish, giving the watch a slightly dulled appearance that reflects less light and appears not just more vintage evocative, but frankly more expensive, as the timepiece doesn't have the glossy, gleaming, oversized case aesthetic that comes with the standard dark side. Of course, the watch with a 60-hour power reserve and an Omega Caliber 9300 inside, automatic winding, twin barrels, coaxial escapement, certified chronometer, anti-magnetic with silicon hairspring, shock resistant with a free sprung index and a full balance bridge, and handsome arabesque Cote de Genève with blackened rather than polished or blued screws. Of course, it features a time zone function that allows you to jump the hour hand independently and even jump the hour forward or backwards as you travel east and west. Note the use of hours and minutes on one register over at three o'clock to maintain a clean by register vintage inspired dial. Let's do a quick loom shot with this watch so you get a sense of the vintage loom. Here you can see, like the gray side, and pointedly, unlike the dark side, this watch features a fully loomed tachymeter scale, as well as a loomed crown insert. So it's a very cool watch by the light of day, and also by night, where this watch proves to be surprisingly legible and practical. Far from a novelty like the original dark side, this is an everyday watch for those with tastes in larger timepieces, scratch-resistant cases, highly refined, comprehensively engineered movements, and again, I love the attention to detail as you get a ceramic buckle on the clasp, so this part too is impervious to scratches, where the watch is most likely to come in contact with a table. Now, Bell & Ross builds some handsome watches that are first and foremost 
superb design exercises. And this BR0394 Horolum is effectively the brightest watch you are going to encounter without some sort of active lighting system, but it's more than that. Being entirely media blasted steel and 42 millimeters, it is superbly built, finished, thoughtfully designed, and practical. Much smaller than the original BR01's 46 millimeters. The 42 here wears square on the wrist and surprisingly thin, comfortable, and 100 meters water resistant with a sandwich style dial like a Panerai. You can see that there are recesses into which the loom is inserted, and it's probably built like a Panerai dial too, with a disc underneath a stencil to create not just plenty of loom, but a three dimensional luminescent effect. It is a chronograph. It does have a 42 hour power reserve, automatic winding, stop seconds, and a quick set date. Let's see if it's wound enough to fire up for you folks at home. The timepiece also includes upscale refinements like the use of screws and bars to fix the strap rather than spring bars and a custom strap that is built properly to suit the width of the lugs. This is anything but a default design. Every single piece of Bell & Ross's watch is thoughtfully designed. You'll note this watch right here also a limited edition number 257 out of 500. A very special piece that came out in 2019 and one of Bell & Ross's best efforts in years. Now of course because it is the BR03 a design originally launched in 2007 the size is much more wearable than the other instrument watches. Super comfortable and an absolute blast to wear. This watch gives us another excuse to break out the loom shots. And here you can see the watch is truly fully loomed, including the chronograph functions and the sub-registers. And you can see that three-dimensional effect in the dial created by the use of the sandwich construction. This watch is a supernova. If I were looking at this with NVGs, I would be blinded. Okay, in the world of Rolex, there are basically three flagship watches. These days, it's come down to the Daytona, the GMT, and the Submariner. And of the three, as a motorsports fan, I prefer the Cosmograph. 40 millimeters in white gold. This is an extraordinary and discontinued model. Reference 116509. It's a handsome piece that has everything I love about the Daytona. And I prefer the metal bezel watches. So you can see one of those features is the continuity of case, bracelet, and of course, end link integration that flows into the fluid polished white gold bezel. Of course, the dial here is special, and the watch is wearable on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist being only 12.2 millimeters thick, but you'll note the features here, black matte dial rather than gloss, radially arrayed applique white gold Arabic numerals, and then thoughtful use of red shocks on this dial, a subtle but exquisite contrast. I also like the use of the polished chapter rings and the red calibrations of the individual registers. Now you're getting 100 meters water resistant, COSC chronometer, and a three-day power reserve, which is intriguing because the other watches that Rolex equips with modern movements have 70 hour power reserves advertised. For some reason, Rolex advertises 72 for the Daytona, which I always found quirky, but much appreciated. Vertical clutch and column wheel chronograph, very tough. And of course, a versatile piece. This watch, which you see here, is a serial number from the D series, so approximately 2005. Like I said, this is a discontinued model and a much loved example. And in gray gold, it's solid white gold all the way through, smelted in Rolex's own foundry, case, bracelet, and clasp, built in Rolex's own factory. Manufactured product inside and out. This is one of the best of the modern Daytona. All right, this was a special piece built just for boutiques of Jaeger LeCoult in the year 2019. And it is the Jaeger LeCoult Reverso Duo Face Casa Faliano, a limited edition of 100 pieces with Faliano strap built in Argentina. Quick disclosure, this one right here is on a JLC Camille Fournay French made strap. We have the Faliano on order, but those things move slowly. We're probably sitting behind the British Royal family and their polo boots in the build queue. All of which is to say it will be reunited with the Faliano strap, but at the moment, appreciate it for its beauty. The timepiece featuring rose gold, really red gold more than rose, and an explosive blue sunburst style with applique rose gold indices and at center Dauphine hands. Now the timepiece features a case that is just over 47 millimeters lug to lug and just over 28 millimeters wide. It is a gorgeous piece with the post-2018 sunburst internal carriage, and as you can see, the post-2018 lug shaping which arcs around the wrist. Now on the reverse side of the watch, you have a lovely travel time indicator. It is a second dial independently settable with a 24-hour night-day distinction at the bottom. And this was something new for 2016, the use of a hidden adjuster for the second time zone. You can see this is one of 100, a very scarce watch with the red gold 
the blue dial and the white reverse dial exclusive to this model. It's an easy watch to wear for a reverso. Many reversos of the 2000s were just too big, but I feel this size pretty much nails it. Perfect. Not too big, not too small. A practical travel time watch, and if you're going to own a JLC and just one, I recommend you get a Memovox Alarm or a Reverso. And if you get a Reverso, I always recommend the Duo because it is an iconic complication from JLC. Since the 90s, finding a way to make the rotating case relevant again in the modern era. Two watches in one, the JLC Reverso Tribute Duo Face Casa Faliano. And as mentioned, the Faliano Shell Cordovan strap is on order. I don't have a GMT on the show, but with a Rolex Submariner Kermit, I can say at least I've got two of the big three. 40 millimeters and technically known as the 16610 LV for Lunette Vert. This watch, also known as the Kermit, exploded onto the scene in 2003 as officially the 50th anniversary Rolex Submariner. Of course, it was replaced by the Hulk back in 2010, which means this watch, long since discontinued, is a certifiable collector's item, but you want to get a good example that's in excellent condition, minimally refinished, and representative. The timepiece, of course, defined by its bezel, but also, if you look carefully, defined by its dial, as it was the first Submariner to use the oversized indices first debuted on the Yachtmaster, known as the Maxi Dial in its day. This was later brought over to the six-digit watch as the standard dial, so you can't just make a Kermit. You need both dial and you need the bezel, each one equally important. COSC chronometer, automatic, 48-hour power reserve, 40 millimeters, and reasonably slim. You can see this is an all-the-time watch, not a sometimes watch. Well, dive watch Watches ordinarily are considered to be aggressive sports watches. The Rolex dive watch is well established in office parks the world over as an all the time timepiece that could easily accompany a bathing suit or a business suit. The bracelet is an interesting transitional piece, as you can see. The Z series serial number, this watch marking it as 2007 manufacture. The bracelet, an interesting transitional piece because we still have the stamped clasp and the hollow center links, but we're now solidly into the era of solid end links. And remember, though the original prototype photos of the Kermit showed perforated lugs, no production version of this watch was ever built with holes in the lugs. So if you see that, you're looking at a fake. The bezel is distinctively Rolex, which means it feels and sounds like a million bucks. Let's hear. And let's do a quick loom shot. And we're back with the sub. And remember, we're solidly into the era of Luminova here, so this dial was only ever Super Luminova. What a way to get into Rolex, my favorite color, and one of my favorite watches. The Submariner was the watch that originally piqued my attention when I thought, hey, watches are pretty cool back in the late 90s as a kid. If you're gonna end, end with a Longa. And this Longa One Luminous is an awesome combination of white case, black dial and abundant luminous material. While we often associate the Lumen series with Super Luminova, the fact is there have been many Longa watches that do include luminous dials, and this is a great example. Now, the watch you see here in white gold is the original 38 millimeter case, so it's not the somewhat awkwardly proportioned Grand Longa One Luminous that debuted in 2003. Easily wearable, comfortable, and iconically Longa. We talk about the essential watch at each brand, and if it's something like a Sub or a Daytona, a Rolex, and a Chronomet Bleu, a Res, or a Tourbillon a Jorn. At Longa, it's going to be a Dato, a Zeitberg, or the Longa One. And this is a great way to buy a Longa One that's going to give you more utility and full-time wearing enjoyment than a standard non-luminous dial. Now, you can see the strap right here, which is a factory Longa piece, has a lovely contrasting stitch that perfectly matches the dial. And the watch includes a wonderful quick-set system that has the same pleasing pusher feel and tactile quality as a fine column wheel chronograph. Of course, three-day power reserve manually wound caliber L90 is an Opus. It was was then, it remains now. The first movement Longa started to design back in 1990 when the company was re-established. It features the gorgeous German silver bridges, nickel copper zinc giving it the golden hue thanks to the copper. You see the mirrored anglage on the edge of the service ports as well as the edge of the bridges. Black polish on the case clamp screws, the locating posts for the three-quarter bridge, the cover for the escape wheel and the swan's neck regulator, and of course you have the freehand engraved half bridge for the balance. Stop seconds, three-day power reserve, double date with a pusher adjuster, and of course, the power reserve indicator on the dial side. We're gonna finish up with a lumen shot of the most interesting Longa I've had on the show in a while, and easily one of the best ways to get into German ultra-high horology. 
There you go. And you'll note that the folks from Saxony, if my phone will oblige me and focus, they also loomed the power reserve indicator. Remember guys, everything you see here is for sale. Names, references, and of course prices when available in the description below. Remember, this is the oddest watch, the most exotic Casio, and possibly the only G-Shock that will ever be on the show. 35 made, a once in a lifetime opportunity. This timepiece is truly one of those I will never see it again watches. As interesting to me as any minute repeater, and actually more exclusive, this is the rare ultra high-end watch that you can throw out the top floor of your house, soak in the water, pair with your phone, and set to 39 individual reference cities. All of that and more with a boxed set worthy of an emperor. This is a timepiece that represents more than a king. This is the new emperor of Japan. This thing kicks ass, and at 300 grams in solid gold, it's my weight program for the day. Email tmaso at thewatchbox.com with all purchase and pricing questions.